In this video, we're going to begin our exploration of graphics. So we saw how we could make things more visual using GUIs. We could pop up the graphical user interface, but we were, in some sense, limited to the types of things that whoever wrote the library expected us to put inside of our program. Now, it's true that ScalaFX has a lot of options, from the list view and the table view and the tree view. There were lots of different kind of advanced components that you could put into your GUI, and you had all different uh, abilities for laying them out. But still, sometimes you just want to draw something different. And for certain types of applications, maybe say a game, uh, you really do want to be able to draw something on your own. And so for that type of thing, we actually need to go to graphics. And we're going to start off talking about graphics by looking at shapes. So there is a package that is the scalafx.scene.shape package. And it has a whole bunch of different shapes in it. We can look in the API to see these. So if we go down to shape here, you can see there's a number of different things. I want to start off in this video kind of introducing the easy ones. And we'll start with a rectangle. So I want to add a rectangle into our GUI. So we'll copy our template to uh, we'll just make it a shapes.scala and we'll wind up putting everything together inside of here. So I have imported all of the controls because they might be helpful to us uh, for certain things as well as all of the shapes. So most of the things that we're introducing new here are inside of this package. Let's go ahead and add a title. I've made this scene fairly large, 600 by 600. And I want to start off, as I said, by creating a rectangle. Now, turns out that when you create most of the shapes, you don't use new. You just specify the name of the type that you want and then give it arguments. So maybe I want to, uh, if I have, let's see, 600 by 600, I could make a, a fairly, let's go with 200 by 200 size rectangles. Will it give me uh, enough? No, that won't be quite enough. I can make the window bigger later. Anyway, so I want to make this start at 20, 20, and then I want to have it go for 160 by 160 pixels in the width and the height. We're going to go back to using content here because I'm actually going to position these things where I want them to be. And I will put the rectangle in there. Let's see if I manage to get that one correct. So there we go. We have a rectangle. That's actually a pretty darn large rectangle. Uh, <clears throat> maybe I don't need that to be quite so large. Maybe I'd be happy with a 10 by 10 and then going out to 80 by 80. These arguments are the X location and the Y location of the uh, top left corner, just much like the layout X and layout Y were when we are, were placing things, and then the width and the height of the rectangle. Now I said that you don't use new, and since many of you watching these videos might be going out and looking at the API, you might ask yourself, well, how do I find out what I can pass in? And it turns out that for the shapes, you go to the, what's called the companion object. Uh, this is something that I try to avoid going into too much detail with this early on. But there's a little O here, and that it would pull up this page. And these apply methods can be used to build rectangles. You'll see that each, each one returns a rectangle. So there's one that only takes a width and a height, one that takes a width, height, and a fill, and one that takes an x, y, a width, and a height. And this is the one that I called there. So we have our rectangle, and it's been added. Some other very simple shapes would be circle. And if I just had to guess, I would say that our circle can take an x, y, and then a radius. 
we can go look in the API and see, sure, there's a radius and a fill. There's also an XY and a radius with a fill, XY and a radius. I'm going to use this version right here. Note that this is the center XY, not the top left corner as it is for the rectangle. And so I want this to be centered at 150 by 50 with a radius of 40. And we'll add it into our content. And we should get a nice little circle next to our rectangle. Okay, so we have two shapes. A third fairly simple shape to build and to understand is an ellipse. The ellipse has a the ability to build it center x, center y, radius x, radius y. So I'm going to move another 100 pixels over, 250, 50, and then I'm going to squish this one a little bit horizontally and make it as big as the circle vertically. We add it into our content. And now you can see we have an ellipse as well in there. There are two other kind of simple shapes that we'll cover in this video. The next one will we'll have line and text. Val line equals a line. The line takes an x position and y position. So we're going to go with 310 and 10 as the as the start location and then the end location will be 390 and 90. So it's going to cut diagonally down. What about text? Well, okay, this one's kind of cheating a little bit. Turns out the text is not part of the shape package. So we're going to have to add a new import for this. Text is in text, but it works close enough that I'm going to put it here. We can give it a double X and a double Y or just, uh, and then the string, or just a string. So let's go ahead and add our import for that. And that will be, and actually in this case, it is actually going to say new text. So that is a significant difference to remember here. Well, let's see, where do I want this to go? It, hmm. We'll start with it just without giving it any position information at all. Uh, some hmm, text. And then just because I have a feeling about things, I'm going to put a G and a J in here. And let's run. Okay, so the line definitely showed up. Where is my text? Well, by default, it's positioned at 0, 0. And you can see why I put the J and the G in there. There's these two little black marks that are hanging down. It turns out that the position that you give text is the position of, if you were writing on lined paper, it's the bottom line that goes under most of the letters. But some things like J and G would hang down below it. So I'm going to give this a position. We'll put it. at say 410 with a position of 50 in Y and we can see what that looks like. There we go. So 410 over and it's actually positioning the point right here at the base of the S. So the line that goes under there is the I value that was specified. So those are kind of the simpler shapes that we can add, things that we're definitely used to. Uh, we'll come back and we'll look at things that are a little bit more complex than this.